In case you were wondering, yes, I'm currently twinning with Tia and Tamara. This show was hella creepy, and so were the characters. What's up, you guys, and welcome back to Soap by JJ 101. Today is Tuesday, which I, means I'm giving you another recap, review, whatever. But it's not of Pretty Little Liars, because that show ended. So, since it is summer and I am waiting for season two, I'm going to give you season one reviews of Riverdale. So, when I asked you guys what shows you wanted me to review now that Pretty Little Liars was over, Riverdale, why is this one hair sticking up? Let's try and fix that. Sorry, it's just like, see that? Uh, <laughs> So when I asked you guys what show you wanted to see, Riverdale was the one common denominator that kept popping up. So I decided, let me go check it out. Um, so we're going to be doing Riverdale for the summer on Tuesdays until I figure out the official Riverdale schedule. If you know it, please feel free to list it in the comments down below. I personally would greatly appreciate that. So with that being said, let's move on to number two. Yes, my fan is going and you know why. Because it is hot. Say it with me now. As satan's ball sacks so i am not turning this fan off especially with the ring light the heat it's just it's not happening it's not happening and before i forget i want to give a huge shout out to diana congratulations diana you graduated high school which means you are the real mvp and there is nothing and nobody that can stop you from your destiny pew 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 now let's get right into the review Hold on. So the show starts off so gray. The whole sh sh episode, I can't say series because I've only seen episode one, but the whole episode was gray. And I'm trying to figure out why, oh why, is this episode gray? Like do homies live in Hoboken? Like I don't even understand why it's so gray. It reminded me of that episode of freaking Fairly Odd Parents where they all got transported to this gray town. Like that's the setting in my opinion, of Riverdale. And then you can't help but bring up these obviously natu not naturally redheaded characters that personally skeeve me out. Like, they freak me out. Like, they look scary. They look like the undead. They look like they just came off of Davy Jones' boat, okay, from one of the Pirates of the Caribbean. I just, I didn't like that ish. I didn't like it. So it opens up in this gray town with these awkwardly ghostly like redheaded gray twins okay and i don't know their names i just know that the girl's name is cheryl blossom and i know that they were known as like the blossom twins or whatever and it's really weird because they looked like they were like ancestral not ancestral but ancestral yeah ancestral lovers if you don't know what that means, I'm pretty sure it's a word I just made up in my head and I'm perfectly fine with that. But it's like they look like they were twins that were just completely in love with each other, which also freaked me out. Because I'm like, why are you giving each other like them lovey-dovey eyeball looks? Something just did not seem right. So when they went out on this usual morning boat trip, I'm thinking, okay, they're going to go like do the ancestral nasty. Like what is happening? Like. So then homegirl comes back, but her brother didn't come back with her, and she's like, Oh my god, my glove fell, and then he tried to get it, and then he fell. Now you know the only people who believed that story was the town of Riverdale, right? Because it was just something completely sus from the beginning. And I'm telling you, if you watch Pretty Little Liars, then maybe, you know, you find everything sus. I know I do but something just didn't seem right so she's apparently captain of cheerleading squad and all this other stuff so cherry blossom is one of the main characters she's one of the bitchier characters then you have Betty Archie and Veronica which those are the three characters that like I heard their names I was like aren't those characters from Archie you guys it took me to the middle of the episode to realize that this was like an Archie based series so Archie let's talk about Archie Archie had a summer loving love affair with his teacher while he was working on his father's construction company all while really wanting to be a musician so typical and basic right 
So that's Archie, and Archie actually has fallen in love with his teacher, and while they were having one of their rendezvous, they heard a gunshot coming from the same lake that <laughs> the ancestral twins were at. Shocker. Then you have Betty. Betty is that girl that just does everything right. She does what makes other people happy. And I think that they that they kind of like built it and ended so early in the episode. Well, like in the first episode, instead of kind of drawing it out from the season. But she does everything to make everyone happy, especially her mother. And she's like digging Archie, right? Archibald. I'm assuming that's his name. She's in love with Archie. He lives directly across the street from her. So like she can creepily look into his window with her gay best friend. Because I didn't realize that we crossed over into that movie, GBF, with Satra Pritchard. I don't know how to pronounce that chick's name. Alison De Laurentiis. Um, so she's in love with him, and they've been friends since forever. And so they go out on a date to kind of talk about what's going to happen, like, between them. And then right as they get to the pinnacle, Archie gets distracted by this brunette beauty, which obviously would be Betty. And Betty comes from a very, I guess, rich background, but her daddy did something sus. So her mom moved her back to her hometown of Riverdale. And she also is very much so attracted to Archie. And we'll see just how much attraction there is between the two of them later on in this review. And <clears throat> Betty's a little bit intimidated by her at first, and then they forge a friendship. So we've talked about Creepy Blossom so far. We've talked about Betty, Veronica, Archibald. Now the fifth and final main character is Jughead, which is played by one of them Sprouse twins from Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. He plays the emo super deep i don't give two flying fig newtons about anybody up in this town but i think all of y'all are weird kind of a character and he is kind of the narrator for the series from what i'm understanding from this first episode and he is writing all the details down so jughead isn't really seen too often he's kind of like in the lurches he's like the a of the show you know he's just in the lurches so basically let's move on to the middle of this series so betty has to give veronica a tour of the school and from there they kind of get to know each other a little bit and then cherry mary cherry blossom whatever the hell her name is okay she's part of the cheerleading squad and she wants veronica to be on there because veronica seems like smurp 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 but she doesn't want betty and she doesn't like betty because betty's sister used to date her twin brother and apparently they're saying that Betty's sister went crazy because he treated her so wrong. Girl, I don't know. Like, there was just a lot going on in episode one. So much going on. But, yeah. So, that happened. And then, um... Betty convinces, not Betty, Veronica convinces Betty to try out for the cheerleading squad. And they do a really nice routine. And, like, Mary Cherry is all like that's basic so veronica's all like just play along and she starts some lesbian kissing scene with betty which completely threw me for a loop i haven't been a cheerleader since the second grade so i had no lie since the third grade so i really had no clue what the hell was going on it confused me af but mary cherry saw through them lies because she was like well that's basic the lesbian kiss i need something more so she, basically what she wanted was to make them like super mean girls and veronica who has a history of being a mean girl had no problem doing that and she cursed her out saying that you think you can intimidate everybody and one day somebody's gonna come along that you can't intimidate and maybe that someone is me. So Mary Cherry was like, you're through. Betty, on the other hand, why don't you tell me how you feel about your sister? So she was trying to, like, coerce her or cajole her to, like, um, be mean and say how she was really feeling about her sister and Mary Cherry's brother, okay? And she wouldn't do it. So she was like, she was being a complete another jerk, okay, to Betty. And Veronica was like, um, no, we're a package deal. You don't get one without the other. Scene cuts next thing you know, they're both in these cheerleading uniforms walking the track because Archibald, who is our multi-talented, confused teenager, okay, is just made the football team. And they want him to take the role of the dead twin, which is 
be loved by everyone. I don't think he was beloved by everyone. I think him and his twin Mary Cherry are feared by everybody. And, you know, they're just kind of like... So they wanted him to take his role and not just take his role, but take his number two. So Archie was hella standoffish about that. And, um... Betty tries to... Betty, he sees Betty and Veronica, and Veronica tries to, like, tell her, like, go ask him to the dance, and Betty kind of chickens out, and it's like, you know what, how about we all go together as friends, you know, because that's Betty's persona, so they all decide, okay, fine, we're gonna go to the dance as friends, her mother, who strikes me, Betty's mother, that is what I mean by her, strikes me as an alcoholic, and is all like, Her mother just wasn't having it. And Betty was like, Mom, I do everything you want me to do. I do everything everybody wants me to do. I'm going to do this just for me. I'm going to the dance. I'm going with Archie. And I'm going with Veronica. And her mom is like, <gasps> Betty, you dare defy me? You're not hanging out with that redhead. And you are not hanging out with Veronica. I've heard about her. I've heard about her family. You really think that she could ever be friends with you? And Betty's all like, Well, I'm going and she is my friend. And they walk off because the scene was just hella melodramatic. I was just like, why is it so dramatic right now? So that happens. And while they're at the dance, everything comes out. One of the big macho freaking footballers comes out and tries to make a gay proposition with Betty's gay best friend. And... Archie runs into the teacher that he had an affair with and she's trying to be like, oh no, we can't do this. Even though, ho, oh, we saw in the flashbacks that you seduced him first, okay? And he's like, well, I need your help and you owe it to me because we heard that gunshot in the woods and we never said anything and they still don't, can't find this creepy twin boy's body. And she's like, he's like, he basically tries to blackmail her. Like, if you give me musical lessons where it's nothing but musical lessons, then I won't say anything. So she's like fine because she still finds him attractive, which I don't understand. He's not a natural head ginger. He's like one of them creepy looking gingers. Like you can tell that he dyes his hair. But I bite. So Mary Cherry is all like, we're having an after party. Why don't you come? She says that to Veronica, Betty and Archer. And they're like, sure, whatever. And they walk off and she's like, I'm feeling like chaos. So she has them play spin the bottle. Now, mind you, this whole entire show seems like it's set in the 50s, because seriously, who still plays Spin the Bottle? That game probably ended in the 90s. Just saying. With Corey and Topanga. Just saying. So, the bottle, it was Archie's turn to spin the bottle, but Veronica spun it for him. And the bottle landed directly, directly in the middle of Veronica and Betty. And to be an asshole... Mary Cherry is all like, oh, I think it ended in Veronica, seven minutes in heaven, which is, if you don't know what that is, you go in a closet and you have to make out for seven minutes. So initially they decided that they weren't going to make out because they knew how that would hurt Betty, this and the third. And then, I don't know, at some point they started talking, but then they started breathing heavy and then they started making out and they came out and everybody looked mortified. I don't know if they looked mortified because they heard them making out or if because they were in there for longer than seven minutes, but they come out, his bow tie is completely just wrapped around his neck. It's not even a bow anymore. It's not even a tie. And they're like, oh my God, where's Betty? And Mary Cherry's all like, I don't know. She completely freaked out and left. So he's like, let's go find her. Veronica's like, do you really think she wants to be found by the two of us? Duh. So he goes looking for her, finds her at her house. What a shocker. His homegirl wasn't picking up her phone calls. Would you? I know I wouldn't. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and I'm trying to remember what happened. And she's all like, Archie, we've been friends for forever now. And I just need to know, do you love me or not? And Archie's all like, but Betty, I will always love you. I just can't love you the way you need me to love you because I am not good enough for you. And she freaks out. She walks back into the house. I don't remember what the heck else happened in the series. All I remember is something about Archie's dad 
Veronica's mom going to him asking for help and he's all like I'll see what I can do a bag full of money shows up at the hotel that Veronica and her mom is staying at and she says oh my god what did you do in reference to her husband and then the series kind of ends with a flashback of what's going to happen so they find the dead creepy twin ancestral twin boy with a gunshot wound to the head and Jughead is narrating everything and he's like and by Monday morning we will have our first arrest and it ends so i personally think that this series is hella creepy hella weird hella crazy and that's why i'm gonna keep watching it because y'all all know how i feel about those kind of movies um it's just really really gray and i don't mean like the concept is really gray i mean like the setting is really gray like yes there are vague pops of colors like mary cherry's hair and her lips and stuff like that but like it's just an overall gray setting which is really really weird but i guess for it being the town that it's in it is what it is however i do like the show um, I think so far from what I'm seeing, it's got that murder mystery element and that bitchiness, that right level of bitchiness that I like. It kind of reminds me of a cross between CSI Miami and Pretty Little Liars. So I will continue to watch the series to see how things pan out and do these reviews for you. However, I will not lie. If at some point in the series, I'm like, I don't know what I'm watching. This crap is whack. I will give you a video letting you guys know that's how I'm feeling and that I won't be reviewing the show anymore. So... With that being said, I think that's all that I have for you guys today. Now, every Friday I usually do makeup videos, and my makeup videos aren't really that big of a success. So I've been thinking about playing with the concept of doing makeup videos where it's more related to this series. So maybe like doing a makeup tutorial that is a remake of like the characters of Pretty Little Liars for you guys. Maybe you'll find that more entertaining. And then maybe like a makeup look for the characters of Riverdale. What do you guys think about that? Is that something you'd be interested in? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. As always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, or if you enjoyed me and you want to see more from me, then you definitely need to be part of the GG Meister Mer pod and come swimming with us on all other adventures. How much you do that, you're probably asking? Well, it's simple. All you have to do is rate, comment, subscribe, and share because sharing is caring, and I'll be seeing you in my next video. Love us and like, share. Bye! Bye.